My name is Jay. I'm a 19 year old male and a future army ranger, so I don't scare easily. But that night, I don't know what it was that I saw or what scared me this bad. I guess I should give some backstory instead of rambling. I remember that night very vividly. It was a Saturday. I went to bed a little bit earlier than usual and woke up about 2 a.m. for no reason. So I decided to go downstairs to get some water and a light snack. Side note, I live in a very large home with a lot of land. I immediately knew that something was off. The hair on my neck shot up like the feeling you get when you're being watched. As I walked down the stairs, the entire house was pin drop silent. Once I reached the bottom of my stairs, I was sure I could see four tall shadow figures in my kitchen. I gasped, <gasps> thinking someone had broken into my home. I ran upstairs and grabbed my AR-15 and then returned back down the stairs to my last position. I announced to the kitchen, Hey, I'm armed. You have five seconds to make yourself known. Which was the biggest mistake I could have made. I heard someone knock on the wall opposite me, so I told them, You need to leave before this gets messy. Then the lights cut out, and I shit you not, I saw this thing emerge at the bottom of the stairs, as if it were challenging me. Terrified, but without hesitation, I let off about eight shots into the drywall. The silence returned, but was then broken by a deep laugh. I'm starting to believe this is how I'm going to die. Fight now turned to flight, and I booked it back to my room and dialed 911, telling them that there are intruders in my home and that I'm armed. The officer on the other end tells me, They're on their way, about 15 minutes out. He also states, You need to make yourself known once they arrive, for the safety of you both. What proceeded would be the longest 15 minutes of my life. It felt like hours when I finally heard the loud yelling of an officer. If anyone is in there, you need to come out now, or we will use deadly force. I walked back downstairs to comply with the officer's command and noticed the front door was still locked. I announced beyond the door, I'm going to open the door, I'm also armed. Okay sir, open the door slowly, with both hands visibly on the door. Once I was dealt with as a potential threat, they entered my home and began their search. They find nothing, no intruders, no unlocked doors or windows. I felt a bit embarrassed, but also extremely confused. Standing there baffled, talking to one of the officers, I then heard the spine-chilling yell of an officer shouting, Get down, show me your hands. The officer I was talking to then excused himself, as him and another officer headed in the direction of the commotion. After a few minutes of further searching and a perimeter check, nothing was found. The officer returned to me and advised me it would be best for me to leave and stay with a friend. I then spoke to the officer who had moments ago been yelling and appeared visibly disturbed. I asked him what he had seen and he said, I thought I saw a tall dark figure lurking in the shadows outside. It's as if they were just standing out in the backyard watching us. Needless to say, I had an officer stay with me whilst I packed up some things to stay a few nights with my friend. To this day, I don't know what it was or what it wanted with me and I hope I never see it again. Tonight, I missed a meeting with the devil. I'm just going to start by saying that I'm fascinated by the paranormal and unexplained mysteries. One of my favourites is the case of Robert Johnson. It's important that you know about him in order for my story to make sense. So I'm sure we've all heard about musicians making a deal with the devil. But perhaps the most famous of these cases is that of blues legend Robert Johnson. Between 1936 to 1937, Johnson recorded 29 songs, which would go on to become some of the most influential music in history. He was loved by many, and people couldn't get enough of his music. But this wasn't always the case. When he was younger, Robert would hang around local juke joints where famous musicians would be playing. During rest periods, he would beg them to let him play their guitars and when they did, he got a lot of complaints about the noise he was making. No one liked his music or his singing, and they made fun of him for his lack of talent. 
One day, Robert had enough, and after he was mocked by his own father, he ran away. Six months later, Johnson returned, walking into a bar called Banks, Mississippi, with a guitar on his back. He made his way to the front. Musician Eddie House recalls asking Robert, Boy, now where are you going with that thing? To annoy somebody else to death? Johnson got up on stage and played the best guitar that they'd ever heard. By the time he was done, everyone stood up with their mouths open, in complete awe of Robert's unnatural talent. A fellow blues musician, Tommy Johnson, unrelated to Robert, explained the process of selling your soul to the devil. 1. Take your guitar to a crossroads between 12am and 3am and start playing. 2. A tall black man will walk up to you, take your guitar, tune it and hand it back. 3. If you accept the guitar, you'll be able to play anything. It was rumoured that this is how Robert Johnson acquired his skills, and this was only perpetuated by some of his songs, such as Crossroad Blues, Hellhound on My Trail, Last Fair Deal Gone Down, Me and the Devil Blues, Crossroad, and more. Robert died a year after returning to town, at the age of 27. While it is believed that he may have been poisoned by a jealous husband, no one knows how or why he died. However, witnesses who saw him on the day he died said that he was crawling on all fours, barking like a dog. Now I've always wished I could be a good singer. I dabble in a bit of guitar here and there, but I'm nowhere near as good as I'd like to be. Couple this with my fascination with the paranormal, and you may not be surprised to learn that I wanted to go to a crossroads at midnight, just out of some dark curiosity. I know nothing will happen, but what if? I'd thought about it for weeks. I'd think to myself, I've not got much else to do, let's just take my guitar and see what happens. There's a crossroads not far from where I live, and it's ideal. It's a perfect cross in the middle of nowhere, and it doesn't get many people passing through, even during the day. Last week, at about 12.15 on Saturday night, I was driving back from having dinner with my aunt, and I came to a T-junction on my way home. Now I had a choice between turning left and getting home quicker, but it would be a windy road with a lot of turns and junctions. Or I could go right, which would mean an extra 10 minutes, but it's pretty much a straight road and would mean passing by the crossroads that I'd been thinking about a lot recently. I decided to turn right. I followed the long straight country road and slowed down as I approached the crossroads because I would have to take a right turn. And that's when I saw it. Out of nowhere, I saw a large black shadow figure standing on the driver's side of my car. He wore a flat cap and had a long black coat with his hands in his pockets. He must have been about seven to eight feet tall and was right next to my car as I drove past. I only noticed him when I got to about five meters from him. But all I could make out was his outline. As I continued to drive, I watched him until he went into a blind spot, and when I turned at the junction, he was gone. He had been standing in the open, and now was nowhere to be seen. It scared a living shit out of me, if I'm being honest, and made my adrenaline spike. I know what I saw, and I've told a few people about this, and I feel like some of them are humouring me, and the rest think that I must have been seeing things after an hour-long drive but I wasn't sleepy at all. I was blasting music out loud and singing along as this happened. So what was it? Was it just a tall man standing there waiting for someone to come pick him up from the middle of nowhere? Or was the devil really waiting for me to strike a deal? Before I continue with the final story, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to see future content from me as well as help me in the algorithm. Thank you. So when I was little, my stepdad used to work the night shift at a gas station on the outskirts of Reno, Nevada. It was in a nice part of town off the highway before you head up to the Sierra Nevadas and Lake Tahoe. It's also the route you could have taken to reach Donna Pass which is the party along with the Reeds, who were settlers that got snowed in on their travels to California. 
and wound up eating their dead companions to try and stay alive. The area back then was fairly new, and the Shell gas station was really nice. There were quite a few other stores in that area, along with a bagel shop and a grocery store, and everything was made out of this really dark wood panelling. My stepdad never had any problems working the night shift, though he did tell me some interesting characters would come in, and he often had regulars that he became friends with. My stepdad was the only one in the shop when he worked the night shift, and he was always told about the ghost that liked to pester the other workers, like turn off lights, open or close the bathroom door, knock snacks off the shelf, the works. My stepdad, being the massive skeptic he is, didn't believe any of these stories, and because nothing ever happened to him, he just brushed them off. One night, my stepdad is working one of the night shifts, and it's a pretty quiet night. He hasn't had many customers coming through, other than for gas. And since it's a pay at the pump station, hardly anyone comes into the store. So my stepdad is playing on his phone, and frequently glances up at the doors, or at the security monitor, to see if anyone is coming. But the station is deserted. He turns his attention back to his game, when he hears the electronic sliding doors open, and the sound of the bell above the door goes off. My stepdad puts his phone down and looks up to greet the customer, but he doesn't see anyone. He calls out, hello, but no one answers. He glances at the security camera, but doesn't see anyone else in the shop except for him. And there are no cars at the station or in the parking lot. He gets a little weirded out since the doors have sensors and the only time they open is if they sense someone approaching them. But he just chalks it up to a prank or some sort of malfunction and gets back to his game. Hello. He hears the voice as clear as day, right in front of him, and his head immediately snaps up to speak to the customer he clearly did not see before. But there's no one there. He's even more witted out, but convinces himself he was either imagining things, or that the sound somehow came from his phone or the radio. And then he hears the screams. He said the sound of the woman screaming came out of nowhere and they were so loud and so chilling, he jumped and dropped his phone. My stepdad is a pretty big guy, about six foot two and a little hefty, and he doesn't normally get scared over anything. But he said the screaming terrified him so much he couldn't really think straight. He ran out from behind the counter and checked the aisles, but no one was in there. He checked the bathrooms and maintenance closet, and no one was in there but the screams were still going, and they were still deafeningly loud. He thinks maybe there's a woman outside who might be hurt or being attacked, so he runs outside to where he thinks the screaming woman is, and there's no one there. The lot is empty. There are no people, no cars, nothing. He checks around the back of the store and does a loop, but he can't find the source of the screaming, and, just as suddenly as the screaming had started, it stopped. He goes back inside and checks the security tapes to see if he's missing anything. But other than him running inside and outside the store like an idiot, he doesn't see anything else and he's unsure of what to think. The next day, as he's leaving work and his co-worker takes over, he tells them about what happened, brushing it off as just some weird prank some little shit pulled but the co-worker's response was very different. And even though my stepdad doesn't believe in any sort of paranormal activity, the words still stick with him all these years later. Oh, so you've heard her too. 